to get on 20 of the craziest science experiments to ever be up on the YouTube. Like a balloon that doesn't pop the sharp objects, homemade lava lamps, and even a really crazy way to freeze strawberries in water. Starting with a balloon and a pin that you can see is clearly going in, but not popping. But what's weird about this is you're wondering, well, why isn't the balloon popping? Well, it's simple. If you put the pin at the top, where it's easiest from popping, it won't pop. But if you put it on the sides, it will. On top of that, if you add a little bit of tape and then put the pins in, it prevents the balloon from losing any extra air and from popping, which is pretty awesome. Or even this giant wooden stake that you can see clearly goes in, but doesn't pop the balloon. How is that possible? Well, it's pretty simple. The way we do this is by two methods. One, this stick is actually covered in oil, allowing us to put it in the balloon very simply. But what about the other part? Well, the other part is simply putting it at an angle that allows the balloon to have enough rubber elasticity for the sticks to go in. Next, we've got a candle and we're lighting it. But wait, we also have a balloon. You can see it instantly popped the balloon. But if you put water in the balloon and try doing the same thing, the water just burns the balloon, but it doesn't pop it which is a little crazy. As you can see, this is a bag of water and it's just making the plastic burn, but it's not popping the plastic. That is such a weird science thing. And of course, have you ever seen iron filters? Iron plus a magnet in water does this. But why? Why is magnets attracted to iron or iron attracted to magnets? It's actually mind blowing. Imagine if you actually had to drink water like this. That would be a little scary. I wouldn't want to drink water or anything like this, but look how cool this is when you use the same thing, but in some kind of oil. That looks really sick. And it's all done with magnets, which I really like. Get some baking soda, fill up a cup. And once you do so, you'll notice we put sugar and baking soda in the same cup. Then stir that bad boy up. Once that's done, you'll notice, well, we're about to do something a little crazy. We're going to add sand to a bowl. Once that bowl has been topped off, we're also gonna add some lighter fluid to the top of the sand and then some salt and of course the baking soda. Now you light that bad boy and voila, we now have this. This is happening. Why this is happening is actually, okay, that's a little crazy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that looks a little crazy. It's a worm. Wait, this is the baking soda and sugar, not salt. Why did I say salt? It turned into a worm. You can make a worm out of sand. Okay, I gotta admit, that's a little scary and I would not want this in my house. But it looks really cool, you gotta admit. Like once it's all done, don't try to eat this by the way. It is not, you cannot eat this. It is not a snack, okay? Just make sure you guys don't eat that. It sort of looks like, um, like a pork rind, but it's not, I promise guys, it's not a chip. Okay, we're filling this tub with water. What's going in the tub? What's going in the tub? We got, is that toilet paper? This guy just finished wiping his butt cheeks. Uh-oh, we're putting the, wait, we're putting the paper in the, huh? Wait a minute, wait a minute. He put it inside. Now the paper's gonna be wet, right? Well, wrong. As you guys can see, the water isn't affecting the paper. You're probably wondering why is it not affecting the paper? Well, it's because of the air bubble that's created when you put it inside the water. It creates this weird suction that you're, it doesn't make for a bubble which is for, for, for it to get wet, which is pretty cool. We're adding this to a balloon and then, oh no, guys. This is like the Mentos Coke challenge. Yeah, watch. We're gonna put all that inside the Coke and it's gonna put all the Coke inside of the balloon. We just created a balloon out of Coca-Cola. Okay, that is pretty cool. But can we do this with other types of sodas? Let's try. I think this is Sprite or 7-Up, yep. Which one creates the bigger balloon? Let's see, let's see. It looks like Sprite's winning so far. Sprite looks pretty big. Oh no, guys, I think Coca-Cola's winning. And then we even have like a Fanta. It's, it was, it's seven up in Mirinda. It's like an orange drink. Oh yeah, okay. Guys, Sprite won, seven up one. The seven up middle one was a little bit bigger. Oh, a bottle of water. Wait, what? It's pouring ice. How is a bottle of water pour ice? That makes no sense. You guys can see the water's pouring into ice. Dude, imagine putting that in your mouth. That must be very nice. A nice, cool, refreshing drink. You pour the same water into a glass and that does not happen. But if you go ahead and put an ice cube in it, bam. Look at that, the whole thing froze.
That is nuts. Look at this fun science. Okay, we've got... I don't even know what this is. It's freezing, though. Okay, maybe it's the same thing that we just did with the water. So, as you can see, we have this little packet here. And you pour the packet at the bottom of the base of this fake tree. We're using two packets, and you can see that the cardboard is sucking up whatever juice this stuff is. And it's, of course, very, very cold liquid. I'm not sure what kind of liquid it is, but after a little while, it starts forming these ice crystals all around this little tree, which is what we saw in the beginning of this little video, is that it forms this magical looking Christmas tree. This would be really cool to do during the holidays. You'll have like a Christmas tree in your own little house, but you can see it melts. As soon as it gets big, they just fall right into the Petri dish. It looks like broccoli. <laughs> all right, we got a little dish, right? Now we've got a strawberry. You can instantly freeze strawberries with this water. That's how cold the water is. That is really cold water. Look at that. You can just take off the ice, no problem. Dude, that must be a really refreshing strawberry or fruit to put in your mouth. It must feel so nice. Okay, never mind. Not the hot pepper. We're not gonna put the hot pepper in our mouth. That's a very bad idea. But wait, are we putting air into a water container? Guys, this doesn't seem like a very good idea. I don't see a world where this makes any sense, but as you can see, we're filling this bad boy up to quite a large amount and it's pretty big. But when we let it out, you can see all the air that was trapped in there just flows out. But we didn't see the air earlier. But why does this happen? It's because it becomes a pressurized unit. Once you put air in something like this, it becomes pressurized. And then when you let the air out, well, that's what happens. As you can see, we have different colored glasses with different colored towels. And over time, these little towels will just suck up all the liquid in one and put it into the other. The reason for this is because of gravity. As you can see, they all just start sucking it out. And look at that, we create different colors too. We've got orange now and green. Now it looks like the blue is doing a little bit more work than the yellow, but boom, it made them all even. It's sort of like what would happen if you suctioned out gas out of a car. Now we've got a rose and we're gonna slice the stem of the rose at the bottom. And as you can see, we're slicing the other side as well. And honestly, when you get roses like this, this is the best way to put them in water. You always wanna cut the stems just so they can get the most amount of water when it's growing. In this case, we're adding different food coloring into different glasses so then you can go ahead and add each stem of this flower into these glasses. Now you're probably wondering, Gary, why would you ever wanna do that? Well, it's gonna be using every single one of these cups colors to feed itself. And in doing so, it will change the color of the petals, which is pretty awesome. You can go and start a really big business. You can literally sell colored rose petals on the side of the street if you wanted to. I bet a lot of people would buy them because as you can see, it is beautiful. This is definitely man-made. You can't find real flowers like this in the real world. But speaking of flowers, you can get every single type of color you want on the flowers and even mix and match colors like blue and red or even blue, red, a little bit of white, a little bit of blue and red mixed. And look how beautiful a bouquet looks like. Absolutely fantastic. Now, my birthday just passed in September. And as you can see, there's a candle on this dish. When you go ahead and add water like this and then turn the bottle, making sure it's all inside and then put a candle in the middle of a plate and then put the bottle on top of the plate. Once that happens, it's gonna suck all that water at the bottom because of all the heat that was inside from the candle. It's gonna, it's gonna have to go somewhere. So it just starts sucking up all the liquid which is pretty cool because it needs oxygen. Fire needs oxygen to survive. And honestly, this, they did a really good job showcasing that. Here is another candle with no way this works. Yep, it does. Look at that. A candle works underwater because of the suction from the air pockets created when it goes down, similar to what we saw earlier. And if he pulls it up too fast, it would have taken out the light, but it didn't. Speaking of taking things out, if you have one pin, it can easily pop a balloon. But what if you have a hundred pins and they're all facing up? Will it pop the balloon? No, because of the amount of like pointy parts on this area, the surface area is too large to pop the balloon. Not one single pin is working together. All of them are working against each other. 
which is pretty cool. We just got rid of toilet paper, and now we have a toilet paper roll. With a toilet paper roll, you can actually do a lot of cool things in art and science. As you can see, we have a toilet paper roll that we can just flip back over if we bounce it on its side. It instantly flips back over. And it'll do it every single time you bounce it off the table. It will go right back up in a vertical position. What about potatoes? Do you guys like potatoes? I like french fries. So what if you want to put a potato straw? Yeah, I don't know if that works, but you have to stab it pretty hard. And as you can see, it works. But if you try doing the same thing without it being right there like that, it won't work. Speaking of things that don't work, this is very strange to do. You can create a smoke, pretty much like an O creator, a, a ring creator. It just blows circular rings by just having a little small Coca-Cola can. And bam, look at those rings, baby. That looks nice. I like that. Ooh, we got a pencil. All right, we're gonna roll the pencil on the paper. What are we doing next? I've never seen this one. All right, we're getting the pen, we're getting the, what the heck? We're getting the fork and we're stabbing it. We're lighting the paper on fire. Why is the thing? Okay. Oh, wow. That is cool. That looks like sand. The smoke looks like sand. Oh my God. I'm mind blown. That is actually crazy. How is this even a thing? What? Okay, I can get behind that one. Have you ever wanted to create your own lava lamps? Well, today you can do so. As you can see, we're filling these four up with different food colors. Once that's done, we got red, yellow, green, and blue. Then we're gonna add some of this bad boy, which is vegetable oil, and eat one of these, and try to make them as even as possible, and voila. There we go. Now, we wanna add a vitamin C tablet to each one of them, and as you can see, it's off to work. You now have yourself a home lava lamp. You can do this for Halloween. You can use it to just show your friends on how cool it is. But once it's done, it looks like this. And honestly, it looks pretty flipping cool. Like it just has a mind of its own at this point. It gets a thumbs up for me. And big thanks to Life Hacks and Fun Science for making this possible. And of course, Craft for Kids. I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new one. Bye.